After a couple of hours of sleep, I awoke to find one of my balls had swollen up to the size of a softball. What is happening, roadies? Welcome back. Oh my God, it's 2022, man, and it's a little chilly here in the barn, so I'm rocking my one of one production super comfy sweatshirt. I hope you're staying warm and healthy out there as well. Friends, thank you so much for swinging back by for another edition of Hell on Wheels, a tour stories compilation by Greg Jacobs. This week, this week, man, we've got a series of stories by Mr. Mike Watt from Firehose and Minute Men. Man, these are fantastic. These were faxed. They were faxed to Greg from Mike Watt. And uh, yeah. I, I, yeah, I can't wait to get to this, but first I just want to thank you guys for being here, for subscribing and liking and doing all the whole stuff that you're supposed to do to follow along with this story. If you want to pick up a copy of this book, you can by using the Amazon link in the description, it would be a used copy, but at least you'll get it. If you want to wait it out a few more months, you can do so as well and you'll get a new copy because the University of Hell Press is going to be putting out a whole new version of this book, including these stories and several more new ones that Greg went out and got. Also, stick around sometime in June, I hope it is. Greg is going to come on the show when I'm done reading all these, and we're going to talk about his time doing these books, why he did them, how he did them, how much fun he had doing them, and... Uh, yeah, it'll be good. Greg on the show. Gonna get, get, check that out. Listen, we are also sponsored by our good friends, One on One Productions, whose sweatshirt I'm sporting, as I said at the top. The podcast solutions company out there. Yes, you can go and buy stuff on B&H or buy it on Amazon. But you know what? It's not the same as going directly to folks who specialize in podcasting gear, man. Okay? So check them out. One of one productions.com. They got microphones. They got headphones. They got storage solutions, audio interfaces, stands, everything that you need to start your show or take it to the next level to be a professional podcaster. This is what a professional podcast situation looks like. Here I am. Talking to you, watching you, doing it. Let's go. Here we go. So what at one productions.com. Use the link in the description to get there. And then use the code Roadie Free to check out after you buy a bunch of good stuff. All right, here we go. Fire hose and Minutemen. Tour stories faxed in from Mike Watt. Mike Watt's Weird Tour Hells. Touring has presented many interesting situations to me. Here's some real life happenings in the life of one driven punk rocker. Gun fun. In the summer of 1984, the Minutemen did a gig in Columbia, South Carolina during the campaign trail tour. After the gig, we went to this dude's house. He had naked pictures of his wife on the walls and shit like that. After some beers, we're laying on the living room floor ready to crash when he tells us, well, you guys can start fucking whenever you want. I said, what? Then he says, I got a shotgun in that other room. George says, I bet I'll get to it before you do. This asshole then flies. George goes and sleeps out on the porch. Me and D. Boone conk right there without moving. George says we just tried to sleep it off. Head flame. The day before Firehose's HAHD KOA tour in the spring of 1987, my parked VW van caught fire with my head in the engine compartment. Luckily, when my head caught fire, I yanked the Laker t-shirt I was wearing over my head and this extinguished the fire. Unluckily, I had to start a six-week tour the next day and had to play with my ear, nose, lip all burned up and full of pus. After each gig, Davo, our sound man then, would purge the bugs in my sores with hydrogen peroxide. The burning and boiling from this chemical reaction was intense, but I survived both the burns and the tour with few scars. Kids at the gigs would think I was dressing up like Rambo for the show with my bandages, wounds, and all. Turd House. While on the first Minutemen European tour at the beginning of 1983 opening for Black Flag, we stayed at a squatter's pad in Geneva, Switzerland. 
After drinking their homemade shine, they told us it was made from rotten fruit and shit that they had found in the dumpsters and garbage cans. I went to the head, but since this was a squat, there hadn't been any water there, so there was no plumbing. The turds in that closet must have been piled up three feet high off the toilet. The stench overpowered me, twisting my face and throwing me to the floor. I pissed my pants, but somehow managed to shut the door. I cannot relate accurately the reek of that stink. Base snap. During the little big tour in the spring of 1988, Firehose played Charleston, South Carolina, where I bought the Salmon Rushdie book, The Satanic Verses. That night, I used a strange bass for the gig, a hagstrom, which is made in Sweden. In the middle of the set, the headstock of the bass just snapped off while I was playing, sticking splinters of wood into me with the force of the fracture. After the gig, the rusty book was missing. Disappeared. I never tried to get the book again. One does not fuck with Allah. Stooge Roust. In the middle of the Minutemen's co-conspirators tour in the fall of 1985, I went to pick up Kira at Newark Airport after soundcheck. We were playing in Manhattan, New York City. That whole tour, I was wearing army clothes with a beard, sort of a Castro parody. Anyway, at the airport, there was some construction on a new addition, and these automatic doors would not open. When I opened them myself, two plainclothes police grabbed me and threw me against the counter and completely, completely searched me, saying, All right, what's up with you, Mr. Iranian? Ball swell. In the middle of the Bum Rush the Side Mouse Tour, winter 1988, Firehose was playing Milwaukee, Wisconsin with DOS, me and Kara's two bass only band. The DOS set was bad enough, but after two fire hose sets, yep, we had to play twice that night, I was nearly dead with fever and chills. The next night in Chicago, after a couple of hours of sleep, I woke up to find one of my balls had blown up to the size of a softball. It blew my mind. We dropped Kira off at the airport and drove to Champaign, Illinois. Immediately after we hit town, we took me to the hospital and the doctor said somehow I had contracted something from a bladder infection Kira had recently had. For the rest of the tour, three more weeks, I had to keep a hot water bottle constantly on the ball. I was chafed like a motherfuck when we finished. Knee pop. I was born with bad knees. I've had a surgery on each knee in my early 20s. In the fall of 1991, Fire Hose was on the live totem pole tour and playing Chicago, Illinois with Run Rusty One. Sorry, with Run Westy Run. It was the last show we were doing with them after touring together a few weeks. Near the end, during the encore, their drummer Dan opened a beer and sprayed it all over me. I slipped in the beer and dislocated my knee while rolling my ankle and spraining it. Simultaneously, I hit the deck and immediately went into shock, letting the bass go as I fell. The bass followed me down and hit me right in the mouth, knocking one of my front teeth back about an inch and a half. Three blows with one hit. I put my knee back in its socket and reached in my mouth and yanked that tooth right back to its original place. I had to do the tour sitting down with my knee the size of a cassava melon and my mind totally filled with pain and retching. Then I had a six-week Europe tour right after that. At least my tooth never fell out. Chow heave. When I first started touring, food poisoning was a constant hazard. Now, with more than 20 years under my belt, I got a gut like a turkey vulture, them roadkill birds that fly over freeways. When the Minutemen toured with R.E.M. in the winter of 1985, I got poisoned in Land Lakes, Florida. It became useless to keep changing my pants, so I tied a shirt around my waist and rags around the bottoms of my pant legs and just said, fuck it. After three days, my pants were filled to the knees. Luckily, my condition soon improved. The first time Roadhouse, I'm sorry, the first time Firehose played the town where Edward went to college, Columbus, Ohio, I was poisoned right before the gig and had to play in a wailing fever and nausea. 
When we got done, he took me to his college buddy's pad and put me in his bed. My sickness took a turn for the worse, and I suffered in agony the whole night. Morning found the bed I was in completely diarrhea and soiled. What a way to meet Edward's buddies. I hope I made an impression because the shame was total. Mouth flame. The springboard tour found fire hose playing Miami, Florida in the spring of 1989. We were doing this gig in the Haitian area where George had found some tiny orange peppers and some brine shrimp. Not thinking much, I chomped too many down and started burning immediately. I tried flushing my mouth with everything, but nothing worked. I burned and burned for minutes, then hours. I played the gig crying from them fucking peppers. They even burned a hole in the roof of my mouth. To this day, my brain continues to leak from my mouth when I open it. Mike Watt, people, bring in the tour stories. Great, great stuff. Stay tuned next week. We got the band Germs coming on. And we're going to be reading their story here. So stay tuned for that. Listen, if you want to support a touring crew member out there in need, you can do so by heading over to roadiefreeradio.com, picking up some merch. We got stickers, buttons, magnets, keychains, you name it. And a portion of those proceeds will go to musiccares.org, roadiecare.com, and we will be giving them some lifeblood to help keep them going in this crazy time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Like it, subscribe it, do it, hit bells. You know what to do. I appreciate you. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe out there, and I'll see you down the road.